So far in our exploration of conic sections, we've taken a look at parabolas, and let's see what the graphing form of a parabola looks like. It is y is equal to some scalar times x minus h quantity squared plus a k. And remember, h is a horizontal shifter, left-right shifter, while k is a vertical shifter. We go the opposite of h because it's inside those parentheses, but we'll go k because it's not inside the parentheses. Our circle in standard form is the quantity x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, and that's equal to the square of a radius. So again, h is a horizontal shifter, k is a vertical shifter for that center point, and that will tell you um, where the new um, origin for your circle is, and r would be the radius. So whatever the square root of r squared is, that is your radius. And finally, we've done ellipses, which are really, well, a circle here is a special case of the ellipse. And the ellipse, as you recall, will be x minus h quantity squared over a radius, and that could be either the major or the minor radius, plus y minus k quantity squared over potentially a different radius. Now, the difference here tells us whether this is a circle or an ellipse. If these two numbers are the same, we have a circle. If these two numbers are different, we have an elongated ellipse, either horizontally elongated or vertically elongated, and that's equal to 1. So those are four of the three conic sections. Notice that all of them involved a positive x squared and a positive y squared. And I wanted to highlight that because that's the major difference between these three conic sections and our final guy that we're going to take a look at, the hyperbola. Now, the standard form of a hyperbola looks a lot like the standard form of another conic section, and there's a reason for that, equals 1. The major difference between the hyperbola and an ellipse is this fella right in here. That negative tells us that we have a hyperbola and not an ellipse or a circle. And how does that negative affect the graph? Because the y squared is negative, we have an ellipse that opens horizontally. Our ellipse, in this case, is horizontal because our y squared term is negative. Contrast that with having a y minus k quantity squared. k is always connected to the y over. Um, it doesn't really matter what our a squared or b squared is. It's going to be the major or minor axis, depending on which number is bigger. The, the terms that do matter are my h and my k. h always goes with x. k always goes with y. And we'll set that equal to 1. Now, in this case, my x squared term is going to be the one that is negative. And because of that, this is a vertical, a vertically opening hyperbola. So let's take a look at what negative h and negative k are. Uh, the opposite of negative 2 is a positive 2. And the opposite of a positive 2 is a negative 2. So that's my new center point at 2, negative 2. So I go 1, 2 here, and down 2. And my new center point is there. Let's do this nice and dark in a blue. That's my new center point. Much of what we do is going to be exactly the same. So from my new center point, I will go in the x direction, the square root of that number there, which is 3. So 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to do these in different colors. 1, 2, 3 for a reference point there. 1, 2, 3 for a reference point there. And I go in the Posit, I'm sorry, I go in the vertical direction, square root of 16, which is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, reference point. 1, 2, 3, 4, reference point. And now I'm going to draw my little box, my little helper box. And here, the helper box gives me a lot more information than it did with an ellipse. I have 
asymptotic properties going from this line here and this line here. So, so the diagonals here make up our asymptotes. Now what we have to do is decide whether our parabola opens vertically or horizontally. As you recall, our negative y term, y squared term, means we have a horizontally opening hyperbola. Which means from my reference point, my hyperbola will open in a horizontal fashion, curving that way and that way, never, always approaching but never crossing that um, asymptote. And it will open the same direction. I'm sorry, in the opposite direction as well. This curve is my hyperbola. I have an axis, my axis here, which my hyperbola will never cross because that y term is negative. What happens when the x term is negative? Let's graph these on the same grid so you can see the difference in the two hyperbolas. Uh, my center point for this equation here would be at negative 3 and positive 4, so I would go back 1, 2, 3, and up 1, 2, 3, 4. So my center point for this hyperbola is right here. Um, my major axis is the 25, and that's belonging to my x. So I'm going to go out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, reference point, 5, reference point. My minor axis is 14, 16, and that belongs to, well, square root of 16. And that belongs to the y. So from here, I'm going to go reference point up 1, 2, 3, 4, reference point, And down 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, reference point. Draw my little box. Draw in my um, asymptotes. Asymptote. Make it, I probably shouldn't have made it yellow. Oh, well. Asymptote there. And now this one opens up and down because my x is negative. And we'll do this one green. And let's open this one up and down from the reference point. It goes toward the asymptote but never crossing. From And you can see how I lost my asymptote. You can see how my hyperbola opening up and down with a negative x squared term here is very different from my hyperbola opening left and right with my negative y squared term in red.